Lady Clotilde, is it time for you to depart? Yes, I'll be stepping out for a while. But more importantly, who do we have here? Is that... No way! The... 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 Vita Clotilde? Whoa! I can't believe it! It's really her! I never thought I'd actually get the chance to meet her. Wait, who is this now? You three! Don't just stand there staring! You're in the presence of the legendary opera singer Vita Clotilde! The Azure Diva herself! The Azure Diva, huh? Hmm, I do recall hearing that name at some point. Wait, you know who she is? <laughs> I'm not surprised. Opera is a world unto itself. I expect there are multitudes who have never heard of me before. I'm Vita Clotilde, an opera singer. I'd be delighted if you would come and hear me sing sometime.
chest. Watch out, guys! Go! There! Right! Analyzing enemy attack patterns. I've got it! It's my turn! Here we go! expected to go <laughs> I've only just begun <laughs> I did it that's by treasure Expected to go. All right. Now's our chance. We can do this. Here we go. The second floor. Analyzing enemy attack patterns. I've got it! Leave it to me! Lock it! Walk it away! Go! Read! Right, right! Take this! Turn. Well, that went better than expected. How'd you expect it to go? Oh, a 
treasure chest. Expected to go. Done. This would make a great training area. I envy the people who live around here. Only you would see an underground passage and think about training. Keep moving. Treasure. Ha! Enemies ahead! You have to fight! My turn! <laughs> Analyzing enemy attack patterns. I've got it!
Leave it to me. Rock is walking away. My turn. Go. Fuck it. All right. All right. Take this. Well, that went better than expected. How'd you expect it to go? Enemies ahead! We'll have to fight! Right! Ah! Off guard! I'll take you up! Right! Locked and walking away! My turn! The second floor! Yeah! Now's our chance! Gotcha! You're finished! My turn! Right! Hey! Evil will fall before my blade! That went better than expected. How'd you expect it to go? <laughs> I've only just begun. All right! <laughs> I did it! Stay on guard and don't of get course. cocky! Ah! My turn! Yes. It's my turn! Locked and walking away! Yeah. My turn! Now's a chance! Fuck it! Alright! All right. Ah. Ah. Go! My tight! Off guard! I'll take you up! <laughs> All right, let's keep going. I did it. Success. Right, 
Let's keep going. Enemy sighted. Let's take them out. My turn. The second floor. Damn, has a chance. Gotcha. You're finished. Right. Hey. It's my turn. Keep that. My turn. My turn. That's the power of the eight leaves. Turn. The second floor. Damn, go! Fuck it! Leave it to me! Well, that went better than expected. How'd you expect it to go? Right. Uh, my turn. Go. Leave it to me. Lock it. Walk it away. Go. Of course. Is everybody okay? I welcome all challengers! The second floor! Damn, go! Gotcha! Right! Right! Go! Right! 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 Evil will fall before my blade! Enemy sighted! Let's take him out! Gotcha! You're finished! Of course! Huh? Right. It's my turn! Take this! Go! Okay, it's safe for now. Dangerous foe. Stay on guard. Turn. Has a chance. 
you up. Right. Enemy attack patterns. I've got it. My turn. Target box. Now, well, let's go. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, everyone. Was it strong enough? Okay.
Let's activate. <laughs> My turn. My turn. should just stop worrying about trying to form a combat link with each other. Yeah, maybe. I mean, I can see why you'd really want to. 
No. I don't want to hold our group back more than I already have. I'd like to withdraw from active combat and take a more supporting role for the duration of this field study. Huh? Why? But Laura, it doesn't make any sense for you not to be in the thick of the fight. Don't be ridiculous. If anyone should be benched, it's me. It makes sense when you consider what each of us brings to a fight. No. My own immaturity is the cause of this. There's still a part of me that refuses to accept you, and this is the result. Uh. Uh. I'm sorry. I didn't think I was this narrow-minded. And I apologize for the distress my prejudice has no doubt been causing you. I came to realize during my club activities that I still have a lot of maturing left to do. Laura... As such, Ree, I wish to withdraw. Denied. Actually, I'll be the one withdrawing from frontline combat. Uh, huh? Reen? This seems awfully sudden. What's your line of thinking? During all the battles we fought, one thing stood out to me. I couldn't help but notice that under ordinary circumstances, Laura and Fee's fighting styles complement each other perfectly. I... Well... You think so? Interesting. What do you mean? Laura's the ideal knight, standing strong in the thick of the fight, dominating enemies with her blade. Then there's Fee, the ideal vanguard, overwhelming the opposition with her speed and creating openings for Laura. During the practical exam, none of us should have stood a chance against the two of you. Hmm. When you put it that way, it does make sense. If they could form a combat link, they'd be virtually unstoppable. Yeah, I don't think that's escaped you two either. That's why you keep trying to form a combat link, but there's something stopping you from connecting with each other. Whatever it is, it's been frustrating both of you this whole time, right? Mm-hmm. It's exactly as you say. Okay, so, since that's how things stand, it makes no sense for you two to just give up and withdraw from combat. In fact, considering everyone's relative strengths and weaknesses, it makes the most sense for me to fall back. This way, you'll have more chances to work out whatever it is that's standing in the way of you forming a link. You have my thanks. We'll take you up on your offer then. That's what I like to hear. You really can be audacious sometimes, you know. Just like you were with me and Eusis. You think? I don't really think I did anything out of the ordinary. <laughs> That's so you, Reen, to not think anything of it. Still, thanks to you, there might be hope for these two after all. We'll do what we can. But first, we need to get back to the hotel, right?
enemies ahead. We'll have to of fight. Of course. Hey! Right. <laughs> Leave it to me, Zach. Okay. <laughs> of course. Hey! My turn. Oh, we did it! Leave it to me! <laughs> My turn. Combat. No, it's my turn. Lock is walking away. That takes care of them. Is that a treasure chest? There's a light. The sound's getting louder too. We must be getting close to the exit now.
Ooh, this looks like a good spot. That's a catch! My turn.
This is incredible. He could open a shop with all the instruments here. A piano, violins, wind instruments, a robust percussion section. I'm assuming the papers in the cabinet are all sheet music. There's no way you can call this just a hobby. <laughs> yeah, coming in here, this must look like some rabid obsession to you guys. You know, my mom was a pretty famous pianist. Being raised around music like that, my sister and I ended up sharing her love of music. Really? Looking at all this, I can see why you decided to join the wind orchestra at the academy. Still, why didn't you go to the same school as the people we met earlier? Fee? Wait, Fee, that's not... <laughs> Don't worry about it. I'm sure this comes as no surprise, but I'd originally planned to attend the Music Academy. Oh. Huh. <gasps> My sister and I grew up listening to our mom play the piano. Dad was more the strong, stoic type, he didn't know much about music, but he was head over heels in love with her. Our home was always filled with the sound of music, and it kept our family smiling together. But seven years ago, Mom got really ill. Eventually, she passed away. After her death, my sister and I both wanted to follow in her footsteps. She enrolled at the music academy and began working toward a career as a pianist. Naturally, I tried to do the same, but Dad wouldn't hear of it. It's one thing to have it as a hobby, but the idea of a man of the Empire making his living through music is absurd. No matter how hard I tried to convince him, he just shook his head and refused to listen. Then he started recommending one military academy after another, trying to push me toward a career in the army. Eventually, I didn't have much choice. I had to give up my dream of attending the music academy. I hated him for it. I really did. I'm no good at fighting, never have been. I'd get smoked in a real war. But after some research, I found one academy, Thor's, offered plenty of music-related classes, and that about half of its graduates end up in careers outside the military. In the end, I met him halfway and chose to enroll at Thor's. <laughs> Kinda pathetic, huh? You've all got great reasons why you're there at the academy. And there's me, who'd rather be on a stage than a battlefield. But I couldn't go against my dad. For a while, I started to think that maybe my passion for music had kind of cooled off. But I'm still full of regrets about the Music Academy and the Summer Festival concert, so I guess it hasn't after all. Oh, I wish I could just crawl into a hole right now. So that's how you ended up at Thor's. I had no idea. <sighs> Do you regret it? Coming to Thor's and all? Huh? Of course not. Why would I? Huh? So, you don't? Life at the Academy keeps me busy, but I still have time to perform with the Wind Orchestra after class is out. And I feel like I really broaden my horizons every time we go on a field study. Honestly, I feel like I get more out of Thor's than if I had just enrolled at the Music Academy without much thought. Maybe it's because whether I decide I want to be a musician or do something else totally different, I'll at least have the chance to choose what I want without someone deciding for me. Elliot, wow, you've really given this a lot of thought. You really are strong, Elliot. <laughs> I wish I thought so too. I still feel jealous when I see my friends who went to the music academy putting their heart and soul into their music. But even with that, I've got no regrets about coming to Thor's. None at all. Besides, if I hadn't come, I never would have met you guys, would I? I'd regret that way more. How can you say that with a straight face? Maybe he's just oblivious. I didn't think I was saying anything particularly embarrassing. <laughs> I'd figured that most people would blush saying something like that. <laughs> Still, this is Elliot we're talking about. He can get away with it. You're the last person who should be saying that, Reen. Actually, I just remembered. I guess I do have one regret after all. 
Huh? What is it? Remember the summer festival concert my friend said they're going to be performing in? Back when my mom was still alive, she performed in it, and my sister played in it five years ago too. So I was really hoping that I'd be able to take the stage there one day too.
what a pleasant evening. It's pretty relaxing. No denying those two have some surprising similarities. I don't see any people in this part of the park. I'm fine with here if you are. Uh. All right, Fee. Here are my conditions. If I win this duel, I want you to tell me about your past. Your personal history. At first, there was something about your strength that I couldn't bring myself to accept. From the moment we first met, I could tell you were holding back. And considering your build, your combat proficiency is extraordinary. It's simply too far removed from what I've come to know through following the way of the sword. No doubt. Really? Yeah, all things considered, Fee's strength is totally improbable for someone her size. To add to that, you were once part of a Jaeger Corps. I can't say I've ever thought of the Jaegers in a particularly favorable light. If one defines knighthood as the way of the virtuous, how can the path of the Jaeger be seen as anything but corrupt? I came to believe that because we'd been raised with such strongly opposing values, I could not accept you. <gasps> However, I was mistaken. <laughs> After hearing Elliot's story, I asked myself again why it was that I felt such resistance to fighting alongside you. I tried to ascertain my own feelings, slowly and carefully. And that was when I finally realized, during all these months we spent together, I've known deep down that you were worthy of my trust. Our values had nothing to do with that judgment. It came from my heart alone. <sighs> 
But in my stubbornness, I refused to acknowledge that one simple truth. In my heart, I had already deemed you worthy of trust. Yet in my mind, I still couldn't see past our incompatibilities. I suspect that contradiction was what prevented us from using our Arcus to fight as one. <laughs> so, that's how it was. Did you know about this? Yeah, I noticed during our fight with that monster earlier. You aren't the only one who thought we couldn't get along. You live your life so... honestly. I guess somewhere along the way I'd given up on you ever accepting me. I see. Still, what does this have to do with wanting to know about my past? Why do you want to know? <laughs> it's very simple, really. I want to know because I like you. What are you... I find it frustrating when I'm not able to understand those I've taken an interest in or have a high opinion of. I felt like this several months ago with Reen, and I feel the same way now. That's why I want to know your history. I want to know what shaped you into who you are now. That said, this is simply an act of self-indulgence on my part. Nothing more, nothing less. <sighs> <laughs> I'm not sure what to say. That's our lore, all right. You really are something else. It's fine. I don't mind telling you. But taking your spoils by force is the Jaeger's way through and through. Is that okay with you? <laughs> it's fine. Because I have no intention of thinking of my reward as a spoil of battle. I'd much rather consider it an honor, bestowed for a hard-won victory. Fine by me. You just talk things out. Why do you even need to fight now? <laughs> All right, I'll officiate your duel. Neither of you need to hold anything back. If I think it's getting too dangerous, I'll step in and stop the fight. Very well. Thanks. Impressive. Same to you. Then I won't hold back. Allow me to show my strongest skill learned from my father. Then I'll show you my strongest. Learned from the boss himself. That's enough! <sighs> uh, I... I couldn't even tell who won. What about you, Reen? I feel bad saying this after volunteering to be the judge, but as far as I could tell, it was a draw. Really? Huh. Well, I suppose it is what it is. I'll simply have to continue my training and challenge you again another time. And don't forget, I still wish to duel you as well. Wait, why me? <laughs> Honestly. Actually, I lost this one. Huh? Jaegers are at our best when we fight at night. The darkness gives us an edge. But even after I threw out a flash grenade, the duel still ended in a draw. If we'd fought during the day, I would have lost. That's... She has a point. Well then... Very well. I'll accept this victory. Hmm. Well, anyway... I guess the two of us should go for a little stroll, then. I don't mind if you listen. Is that fine with you, Laura? I have no objections. We're all in this together. Okay. I used to be part of a Jaeger Corps called Zephyr. 
Before that, my earliest memories are of explosions and battlefields. I found myself wandering in a war-torn hotspot on the outskirts of some country I never even knew the name of. Jaeger Corps threw themselves into battle for the highest bidder day after day, while I wandered alone. The man who eventually took me in called himself the Jaeger King. He was the leader of Zephyr, a pretty famous Jaeger Corps. He was middle-aged, crafty, stubborn, and lucky. He always seemed so carefree, but he never let his guard down. To me, though, he was the closest thing to a father I've ever had. The other members of Zephyr had their quirks, but they were all nice to me. As time went on, I started helping with the cleaning, the cooking, the packing. During my free time, they started teaching me all kinds of skills I'd need to survive on the battlefield. One thing led to another, and I ended up fighting in my first real battle. The boss was reluctant, but after the others persuaded him, he made me a full-fledged member of the group. For the next few years, we lived and fought together. I even picked up a nickname like some career Jaegers do. Silphied. We roamed all across the continent together. There were hard times. Times when we thought we might not live through the night, but we always did. Until last year, when our boss died. It was a clash with another Jaeger Corps, the Red Constellation. People used to say they were the only other Jaeger Corps in West Zemuria who could match us. Their leader, a guy they called the War God, had been on bad terms with our boss for years. Eventually, the War God and the Jaeger King decided to settle things with one big duel. They kept going for three days and three nights. In the end, they both fell. The Zephyr I'd grown up with disbanded. All the members who were left just kind of scattered. I don't know where they went. Then, just like that, I was alone again. Huh. I... I don't know what to say. After that, you ended up coming to the Academy? Yep. Just when I was wondering what I'd do next, Sarah showed up. She said she'd been following the situation between Zephyr and the Red Constellation. That's how we first met. I told her about what happened, and she dragged me to the Academy. She introduced me to the principal, and after that... Well, you know the rest. That's quite a history. Listening to you tell your story really brings into focus how limited my view of the world has been. But I feel like I finally know you. There's still so much more I want to learn, of course, but at least this gives me a base to build on. How about it? Care to mix things up a little? Oh. Let's do it. Now wait just a minute. <sighs> I should have known. I guess I've had this coming since the practical exam, huh? Well, it's at your discretion, of course. I doubt either of us has the energy to fight at our peak. But we'll give it a try. You've got to be kidding me! We haven't got a chance against them! Come on, this is a good opportunity to see what they can really do, right? Let's just think of this as a little bonus for our field study and give it the best we've got. Uh, fine. But I don't intend to hold back, so I expect no less from both of you. <laughs> you have my thanks. Here we go. I'm not going to hold back. Fine, I'll do it. My turn. Of 
This is nothing. Strong enough. Hang in there, the lights. Too slow. Okay. Yes. You have my face. I'll handle it. Hey! My turn. Of course. I'll handle it. Arcus, activate. Yeah. You have my face. Fool. Of course. Hang in there, everyone! Thanks. I'll handle it. Here! Of course! Shatter! Okay. How about this? Right! Shatter! Okay. No way! I'll handle it. There! Okay. This is so ridiculous. Of course. Shatter! Okay. Arcus, activate. I'll handle it. Here we go. There! Right! Shatter! Okay. Arcus, activate. There! Okay. Arcus, activate. My turn. You have my face. There! I'll handle it. Target box! Got it! And over! Right! Should have seen that coming. You still have a lot of training to do. Done. We... we did it. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> you two. It's like they're off in their own little world. <laughs> I think we've just witnessed the birth of an unstoppable duo. Hey, what are you four doing? Ah, oh, crap. Uh-oh. Students, are you from one of the local high schools? We received reports of a group causing a terrible racket in the park. What in Adios's name were you doing? Uh, please, sir, that, this isn't what it might seem like. There's a perfectly reasonable, uh, though admittedly rather complicated explanation for all of this. Um... We're very sorry for any trouble we've caused. We tried to minimize the disturbance to others, but it seems we weren't totally successful there. Hmm. Perhaps dueling in the park wasn't as good of an idea as it first seemed. Maybe the underground tunnels would have been better. You know, it's a little late for such deep insights. Besides, who do you think were the ones who started this? Don't just act like you're some innocent bystanders.
moving up in the world. <laughs> I've got a little reward here for you. Keep up the good work. Huh? Are they all still asleep? It's almost time for breakfast. Oh, it's you, Elliot. Sorry, we didn't mean to keep you waiting. W what's wrong? You look exhausted. <laughs> you might say we had a pretty eventful night. Look at these geriatrics. On the other hand, as you can see, we have gusto to spare. Isn't that right, Fee? <laughs> and you call yourselves men. How can you two just waltz around like that after last night? I, are you even human? Oh, oh, just calm down. Wow, what the heck did you guys do last night? The two of you look like you've been chased around town by wolves, but Fee and Laura are all buddy-buddy now. Yeah, we'll catch you up on that later. First things first, let's grab the list of today's tasks from the mailbox. Uh...
This park is so peaceful, it's easy to forget we're in the capital. I could take a nap here. <laughs> yeah, people love to come here to relax. There's so many butterflies. It really gives the place an exotic touch, huh?
Being near water always helps me relax. Oh yeah, your hometown is right on a lake, isn't it? Esperanza? I believe it means hope. Ooh, this looks like a good spot. It's a big one! Huh. Wow, this is a big one!
lucky. It's my turn. Okay. Together, no one stands a chance. <laughs> My turn. Okay. Enemy sighted. Let's take him out. Of course. No, it's easy. When we fight together, no one stands a chance. patterns. Neutralized. Guess we're safe. <laughs> I did it. Hm. Not bad. Right. 
me. Locked and working away. My turn. <laughs> Hostiles neutralized. Guess we're safe. <laughs> I did it! Challenging foe. We should engage it with care. Leave it to me. Eat that. Right. Of course. You. It's my turn. Locked and working away. My turn. Analyzing enemy attack patterns. Analysis complete. Turn. Leave it to me. There's no time to waste. Done. I'll handle it. that mechanism was made. I'm guessing a few hundred years ago at least. Probably during the Dark Ages. Those were difficult times back then. Let's take them out. Leave it to me. Lock them working away. Right. Huh? Okay. My turn. Hostiles neutralized. Guess we're safe. Oh, Check. what a nice looking treasure Check. chest. Enemy sighted. Let's it's my turn. Locked and walking away. Hm. Right. Cool. Right. My turn. Target locked. Got it. And open. Right. 
That takes care of them. What is my turn? Don't let it intimidate you. Right. Lock is walking away. My turn. No. Broken. My turn. Here. My turn. Analyzing enemy attack patterns. I've got it. No way. My turn. Go, go. Still feed No way! Leave it to me! Lock it and walk it away! Now! I'll pick you up! Right! My turn. My turn. Right. Go. Elliot. Okay. My turn. I'll handle it now. And open. Right. Right. Go. I'll pick you up. I'll handle it. Of course. We should keep going. <laughs> I did it! All right! <laughs> Not bad. Done. Great! Dangerous foe. Uh, Stay on guard. A worthy adversary. It's my turn. Lock it. Walk it away. <laughs> no. Of course. Hey, now. Broken. Okay. Okay. Now. And open. Right. Hey. Leave it to me. My turn. <laughs> My turn. Of course. Huh? Evil will fall before my blade. A dangerous foe. Stay on guard. <laughs> Don't let it intimidate! Leave it to me! My turn! It's my turn! My turn! Got it! And open! When we fight together, no one stay. Huh? <laughs> 
What a nice looking treasure chest. Bad. Huh. Not bad. 
that? is full of water. I'll bet there's some way to drain it. Let's have a look around then. Now's our chance. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Gotcha. Okay. It's my turn. Go. I'll pick you up. My turn. Huh? We should keep going. Okay. Here. Right. Right. Of course. Huh. Right. Locked and pulled it away. I'll handle it. Huh. Right. Huh. We should keep going. Turn. Here. Right. 
Ruth! Right! Locked and walking away! Of course! My turn. My turn. We should keep going. Leave it to me. Lock it, walk it away. My turn. Good night. Right. No, it can't. My turn. Target's eliminated. Let's get going. So shiny. What is it? Oh, where's the adversary? I'll handle it. Here. It's my turn. Locked it. Walk it away now. Elliot. Elliot. Okay. Take this. Oh. <laughs> Okay. Is everybody okay? 
<laughs> I did it! All right! <laughs> Not bad. Success! I did it! Turn. Lock him, walk it away now. I'll make you up. <laughs> When we fight together, no one... Oh, what a nice looking treasure chest. This place seems like it goes on forever. My father sure gave us a real humdinger of a job to deal with. Well, I'm sure we must be getting close now. Now's our chance! Right! Locked and walking away! My turn. My turn. Okay. Right. It's my turn. All right. Let's keep moving. Right. Finish him. My turn. Here. Right. Lock him. Walk him. Go. Ellie. Okay. Right. Hi. Off guard. Broken. My turn. Oh, we did it. That one looks annoying. Watch out. A worthy adversary. Right! Lock it, walk it away!
Here we go. Now. And open. Okay. It's my turn. Keep that. All right, let's keep going. My turn. Lock him, walk it away. I'll handle it. Here. My turn. Hey. Right. I'll handle it. Right. Hey. You still have a lot of training to do. By treasure. Hmm? What's that shining creature? This looks tough. Careful. Leave it to me. Lock him. Walk it away now. I'll pick you up. Okay. have a lot of training to do. <laughs> I did it! <laughs> I did it! <laughs> Not bad. Success! Great! Nice by treasure. Now 
is our chance. Okay. Here. Done. The advantage is ours. My turn. Here. Right. Lock to the pork and away. My turn. Of course. My turn. It's my turn. Lock to the pork and away. My turn. Of course. My turn. Hot cows neutralized. Guess we're safe. Is that a treasure chest? The advantage is ours! Okay. Leave it to me! Lock it, walk it away! Right! Of course! My turn. My turn. Right. Off guard. Broken. Okay. Done. But we can't relax yet. Of course. Ah! 
Right. Locked and walking away. My turn. I'll handle it. Now. And open. My turn. My turn. It's my turn. Next. All right, let's keep moving. Oh, a treasure chest. Hostile spotted. Beginning right. combat. Locked it. Walk it away. Of course. Ah! Oh, God. Okay. Here. Hm. Right. I'll handle it. <laughs> cool. Leave it to me. <laughs> of course. <laughs> okay. You up. Okay. I'll do. Cocktails neutralized. Guess we're safe. <laughs> I did it. <laughs> Not bad.
It's my turn! How about this? Right! Analyzing enemy attack patterns. Analysis complete! My turn!
A challenging foe. We should. This looks tough. Careful! I'll handle it. It's my turn! Locked and walking away! Right! Huh? Right! Right! My turn! Leave it to me. Right, right. You still have a lot of training to do. Keep moving. Turn. Lock is working away. <laughs> of course. Huh? I'll handle it. Target's eliminated. Let's get going. Looks annoying. Watch out. This looks tough. Careful. My turn. Here. Right. How about this? Hm. Right. Of course. Shatter. 
My turn. My turn. Right. Keep that. Right. Right. We should keep going. It's finished. Okay. Here. Leave it to me. Lock it. Work it away. Right. Uh. Uh. Okay. Hostiles neutralized. Guess we're safe. Neutralized. Guess we're safe. Oh, there's the exit. Oh, we're finally there. Oh, what a nice looking treasure chest.
use a photo. Oh, that. Aww, look at cute little Machias there. He looks like he had such a sweet disposition. Yeah, before he grew up to be a stubborn old nag. Stop nitpicking people's old family photos! <laughs> Honestly. The governor looks the same as ever, though. Is that woman next to him your older sister or something? Close enough. She was a cousin on my father's side of the family. Since she lived quite close, she often came to visit. Now her family was just my father and I, so having her around was a big help. The way you speak about her seems to imply you no longer see her. Did she get married and move away? She died. Around six years ago. Oh. I see. And that has something to do with why you hate the nobility, right? <laughs> hmm. So... I never really planned on telling anyone about this. But considering all we've been through, I suppose it's time I told you a little more about me. It's a long story, but... Would you hear me out? Uh, of course! Hmm. Absolutely. Glad to. Thanks. Sis was nine years my senior. Beautiful, kind, to me, she was in every sense the ideal woman. Now, as I said earlier, we're a family of commoners through and through. But my father proved to be a very capable government official. And eventually he was promoted to an important government position where he started to make a name for himself. Honesty and integrity are a core part of his work ethic, so of course he made his fair share of enemies. But after seeing success in a number of major projects, he gained a reputation both inside and outside the government. My mother died when I was still young, but Sis happened to live around here and ended up helping us in more ways than I can count. Since she was his niece, my father always made a fuss over her. And even though she didn't live in the same house, she was like a real sister to me, a real daughter to my father. I was always so proud of her. As a child, she was practically my idol. And as you'd expect, she had countless admirers among the men of the city. But for all her popularity, she was always level-headed and sensible. So I never felt I had anything to worry about. Until he appeared. He was one of my father's subordinates at City Hall. Though unlike him, he was a noble by birth. A man of high rank, too. The heir of a count. However, he had none of the arrogance or haughtiness one usually associates with the nobility. When I met him myself, he came across as an honest and loyal man. He met Sis when Dad introduced him to her one day. And eventually, the two of them fell in love and began a relationship, despite the difference in their social status. As a child, I was frustrated beyond words. But even I had to admit that the two of them made a good couple. And Sis seemed so happy when she was with him that I had no choice but to let it go and accept their relationship. Time went on and they became engaged with Dad acting as the go-between. And that's when everything started to fall apart. His family couldn't have been more blatant in their attempts to undermine the relationship. Apparently, one of the four great houses, House Cayenne, proposed an arranged marriage on short notice. And the Count's family were up in arms at the thought he might choose to take a mere commoner as his wife. Since my father held an important post, they were limited in how shamelessly they could try to sabotage the marriage. But they began to harass and threaten her in secret every way they could think of. They made her life a living hell. Maybe she didn't want to cause trouble for the man she loved, or perhaps she did it out of consideration for my father. But all that time, she chose to endure it alone. She never discussed it or asked for help. And finally, it became so crushing that she took her own life. It was only afterward that my father and I learned what had really happened. 
It seems that at the very last, he had chosen to betray her love for him. But I told her, he said. I told her I'd treasure her as my mistress instead if she'd just accept that we couldn't be married. I... I just don't understand it. Why would she take her own life? After that, my father seemed to redouble his efforts. It was like watching a machine kick into high gear. With the help of his ally, Chancellor Osborne, he was able to wrest control of City Hall from the noble faction. Then, four years ago, he was appointed to his current position as governor of Heimdall. And that's how the Regnitz family came to be where it is. I don't even know what to say. So that's why you started hating nobles? Yeah. I was so furious at Sis's death. My hatred needed to be directed at someone. Anyone. First I blamed her fiancé, then his family, and the family of the Duke who tried to intervene. In the end, I just hated the nobility as a whole. The people, their culture, the entire idea of social classes. I desperately wanted the strength to win against them. To show how right I was. How wrong they were. But deep down, I knew the truth about my hate. I knew I was taking out my anger on people who didn't deserve it. People who had done nothing wrong. You... did? Mm. They may be from different social classes, but people are still individuals. Sis's fiancé was faithful to her. He just wasn't strong enough to shield her from all that ugliness, despite his love. And the Count and his family were only acting in their best interests, which is to be expected, really. Ultimately, I've had to acknowledge that not all commoners are good people, and... Not all nobles are unworthy of respect. Eusis might not have done much to change my opinion. But getting to know you two showed me that there are nobles who live up to that name. Machias. I have no idea how my father feels about all of this. But this is how I've come to feel. I see. You have my thanks. I'm glad you felt you could talk to us about it. <laughs> Still, I don't think it hurt to be a bit more honest with yourself. If you're willing to admit all of that, maybe you can find it in you to be friends with Eusis, too. Are you kidding me? I might accept that not all nobles are bad, but that arrogant, self-centered fool can go choke on a palm. Always mocking me for spending so much time studying or telling me I need to get out more. I don't think he goes quite that far. Besides, I don't think he does it on purpose. He doesn't mean any harm. That's the most irritating part! He does it without thinking! <sighs> well, that was a good coffee break, wouldn't you say?
give this a try. I'll do what I can. That came out rather well. Mm, okay. This one's my specialty. It'll... Mm, okay. This one's my special. All right, I'll give it a try. Let's never speak of this again.
So the tiara really was in there, huh? Now I'm wondering if the last passenger who stepped off the tram was Phantom Thief B himself. I don't remember there being any unusual passengers on board, though. I see. So you have no idea who Phantom Thief B could have been, then? To have done so much and yet left no trace of his presence. You must truly be a master at covering his tracks. I'll say, but hey, at least we were able to get the tiara back. I suppose that's good enough. What's wrong, Reen? Well, why are you staring at me like that? I think it's time we put an end to this little charade. Don't you, Baron Blue Blanc? Or should I call you Phantom Thief B? What? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> this, this savory taste is why the unripe fruit is the most delectable of all. Wait, aren't you the Baron we met earlier? But that mask... That's the mask of Phantom Thief B. Allow me to introduce myself once again. I am Phantom Thief Blue Blanc, otherwise known simply as Phantom Thief B. Baron Blue Blanc is but one of the many roles I have assumed during my pursuits. Incidentally, might I ask when you first discovered my true identity? It didn't really take much discovering. You went out of your way to show up in the Crystal Garden after all. Now, maybe it's just me, but it hard to believe you were seriously trying to hide your identity to begin with. Your disguises? Nothing short of perfect, I have to admit. But with all the work you've put into this, I suspected you might come check on us near the end of your little game. Ha ha! I see! Excellent deductive reasoning! Simply splendid! Why would you do something like this? Why go to all the trouble? Ah, oh, does that interest you? Must there be a motive? Nah, now that we know your identity, there's nothing more to discuss. Theft is a crime. Indeed, a crime we will not allow to go unpunished. Oh, what spirited youths you are! did he do that? <laughs> Just a little trick I like to keep up my sleeve. Regardless, you have provided me with plenty of sport and more than enough entertainment for one day. I'll be watching your future achievements with keen interest. Ladies and gentlemen, until we meet again, I bid you adieu. He disappeared again. <laughs> That's quite a little trick. You might still be nearby. Let's search the area.
They were wearing the same uniform as Reen's sister. Yeah, they must go to St. Australia too. So, the famous St. Australia Girls School is around here, huh? It's supposed to be a combined middle and high school exclusively for the young ladies of the nobility. Yeah, this is one part of the capital that the masses have no reason to visit. Although, I can at least support the school's commitment to fostering chastity and rejecting materialism. You seem to know an awful lot about a fancy girls' school. D no, no I don't. This is all just common knowledge. Anyway, let's go and wait by the front gate. Yeah, those were the instructor's orders. I'm feeling kind of nervous, actually. Why would you? <laughs> to men, this academy must seem clad in the mysterious, impenetrable aura of feminine nobility. I was wondering... Did you not want to come here, Laura? My father did recommend it to me, but they offered no classes in the martial arts. That alone was reason enough to look elsewhere. <laughs> I can totally understand that. Though 
I get the feeling Laura would cause a real uproar if she went to a school for genteel young ladies. Yeah, I can picture the chaos now. Oh? I have a number of acquaintances who attend there, and from all I hear, it does seem to be a wonderful school. I've heard that even Princess Alfin herself is a student there. I've heard that too. Princess who? You've seriously never heard of her? I know you're not from Erebonia, but even still... <laughs> to be fair, I wouldn't be surprised if plenty of Erebonians didn't know who she is. Princess Alfin is the daughter of our reigning emperor, His Majesty Emperor Eugent. She's supposed to be as sweet as an angel, and popular with everyone. Is that so? <laughs> Actually, I believe she's the same age as Fee. I've had the opportunity to meet her once before. She truly is as charming as the rumors suggest. I figured as much. I've seen photographs of her plenty of times in magazines, though I've never had the opportunity to meet her. Sounds like she's in the same school year as Elise, come to think of it. She has a twin brother, too, Prince Cedric. He's the Crown Prince of Erebonia. Oh, right. I think I've seen a picture of the prince in a magazine before. Dark blonde hair, like Eusis's brother, right? Oh, I think you're thinking of Prince Oliver. He's Cedric and Alfin's older brother. Why isn't he the Crown Prince, then? I've heard the reason is that his mother was a commoner. It seems like a stupid reason to deny him the right of succession, but... That's how nobles do things. I feel like I've been hearing his name a lot lately. He made a big splash when he came back from the borough aboard that airship. Uh, you know the one, right? Ah, you must be referring to his return aboard the Arcel, after the crisis in the borough was put to rest. Yeah, I remember seeing that. It really made a big impact. I'd never seen an airship that looked so white and elegant before. I believe my father went to welcome the prince back in his capacity as Imperial Governor, too. And, yeah, now that you mention it, that does seem to be when I started hearing his name around a lot more. Oh, you're all here already! Ah, you made it! <laughs> it's good to see you all again. You're a bunch of early birds, aren't you? Well, we just about finished up everything we had to do when we got the call to meet here. Were you able to finish up everything on your end too? <laughs> As if we'd leave any loose ends. If not for our unfamiliarity with the city, we would have been finished this morning. Ugh, every time. Looks like getting these two to kiss and make up will be an uphill battle. <laughs> well, some say that when someone gets under your skin, it means you really care about what they think. Wait, did you two...? <laughs> I figured the girls would be the first to notice. <laughs> of course. I, um, I apologize for any worry I've caused you. We're fine now. Really? That's great! <laughs> it sure is. Maybe after this field study is over, we can get together and spend the night talking in one of our rooms. Sounds good. <laughs> the thought of a Class 7 pajama party makes me a little embarrassed. That's girls for you. <laughs> Girls and sleepovers go together like jam and toast, huh? That must be Heimdall Cathedral's bell. It has a solemn, stately sound, wouldn't you say? It sounds so different from how it does in the Aust District. Though that makes sense considering the distance. That bell ringing must mean it's five o'clock. Which means it's almost the time we were supposed to meet here. Green? Elise, what are you doing here? Wait, I guess this is your school, so where else would you be? Um, yes. I see all of your classmates are with you, too. <laughs> it's only been a week since we saw you, hasn't it? <laughs> well, we were told to meet here. Wait a minute. Are you the ones? The nine guests I was told to expect at five o'clock sharp? Well, there are nine of us in class seven. Wait, what? Then that would mean you're the one we were told wanted us to come here? 
Actually, I suspect that would be a friend of mine. Why does she always have to be such a mischief maker? I swear. She could have at least given me a little warning that you are coming. Um, Elise? Anyway, where are my manners? Welcome to St. Astraya Girls School. I hope you'll enjoy your visit. Right this way. What's in here? It looks like an indoor garden. This is the Academy's Rose Garden. The person who called you here is waiting inside. Who did call us here anyway? Whoever they are, they must have considerable social standing. Your Highness, I brought the guests. Thank you! Please show them in! Oh! No way! Hey, Elise, is that...? You don't need to ask when you already know. Now, if you'll follow me... <gasps> I... I knew it! Ladies and gentlemen of Class 7, my name is Alfin, Alfin Rice Arner. It's a pleasure to meet all of you. wanted to discuss with everyone? Please, go right ahead. Ah, <sighs> well, that aside. It's been a long time since I last saw both of you, Yusus and Laura. I'm glad to see you're both well. Likewise, Your Highness. <laughs> You've become even more fetching since we last met. Aw, thank you! 
was rather hoping that you'd decide to enroll in Saint Estrella too. But it seems you chose to attend Thor's after all. Well, I've committed myself to following the way of the sword, and Thor's gives me a place to hone my skills. I apologize for not being able to live up to your expectations. Ah, <sighs> first I lost Angelica to Thor's, then you too. Perhaps I should just transfer there next year myself. Y your Highness. <laughs> Got you to look. But, but I... Hmm. Well, she seems lively. She seems far more easygoing than I was expecting. I've heard plenty about her, but none of that prepared me for meeting her in person. So, this is what it's like to be in the presence of royalty. It's actually rather overwhelming. I can see why people always compare her to an angel. <laughs> Me too. Please don't worry about me. Well, I still have much to learn before I feel like I deserve my status among the nobility. I've been blessed with wonderful friends, and I'm enjoying life here at the Academy. Well, she does seem to have at least one wonderful friend. Kind of an understatement when that friend happens to be Princess Elfin. <laughs> I'm particularly happy to finally be able to meet you, Reen Schwarzer. Elise has told me so much about you. Y your Highness! Um, I'm honored that you'd say so. Elise always mentions in her letters what a great friend she has. As her brother, I wanted to thank you for that. Reen? Oh, it's so refreshing. You're every bit the person Elise says you are. Perhaps even more so. Huh? Actually, I have a teensy-weensy favor to ask. Do you think I could join Elise in thinking of you as my dear brother as well? What? Your Highness! You see, Elise has spoken of you so often that in my heart, you've already come to feel like family. And now that I've had the opportunity to meet you, I fear I simply can't suppress these feelings any longer. I have two brothers already, of course, so I'm sure it won't take long to adjust. I... I couldn't possibly... I mean... enough, Your Highness! Aw, oh, don't be so stingy! Surely it wouldn't hurt to share him with me a little! Anyway, that aside... The reason I called you here today was not to talk with me. There is someone else who would like to meet you. Why? It's not like we're famous. Who do you mean? Isn't that... A guitar? No, a lute? <laughs> oh, it seems he's arrived! Oh! <laughs> well, I apologize for keeping you waiting. It's a pleasure to see you again. <laughs> and you as well, young lady. I trust everyone here has been making themselves comfortable. Who's this guy? I'm not sure, though I feel like I've seen him somewhere before. I serve as a music instructor in the hallowed halls of this fine academic institution. In truth, I am ever on the hunt for that elusive mayfly we call love. But that might raise eyebrows at a girls' school but whose pulse would not quicken wandering into this untainted cloister of dew-eyed maidens? Ah, the romance. Uh. Could he be? <clears throat> Ow! I think that's quite enough. Any more of that and our guests may start edging toward the exit. Ah, uh, I can always count on you to never miss a beat, my dear sister. Wait, so this is... Wow. Indeed.
Tis I, Oliver Rice Arner, also known by some unscrupulous individuals as the debaucherous prince. I also serve as Thor's Military Academy's ornamental chairman of the board. It's a pleasure to finally meet you, ladies and gentlemen of Class 7. To admit, I was surprised to learn that you're the chairman of the board of directors, your highness. I'd heard that the chairman was a member of the imperial family, but still. <laughs> I'm not surprised. Who would expect the infamous prodigal son to chair a committee at a prestigious academy like Thor's? I suppose it's not surprising they'd rather keep it hushed up, though. It wouldn't exactly be great for the school's image. Hmm. That's surprisingly forthright coming from you. Is it really true, though? I mean, that you were the one responsible for establishing Class 7, Your Highness? Indeed, I was. You see, it's always been a tradition that a member of the Imperial family serves as chairman of the board. At first, I wore the title and name only, but I had a change of heart after my vacation in Liberal two years ago. You were in Liberal back then? That would put your visit during the incident that occurred there, correct? Right. All I've done since I returned to Erebonia has been inspired by my experience during the crisis in Liberal. As a result, fruitless though they may prove to be, I've set a number of plans in motion. One of which is to bring the winds of change to Thor's military academy. A gust of fresh air, if you will. Winds of change, huh? I can only assume you're referring to our class? Then the one who decided to throw both commoners and nobles into the same class was... Yes, the idea was mine. Although the selected students also had to have a high aptitude with the Arcus units too. I think I'm finally starting to understand the reasoning behind Class 7. And why we're being sent all over Erebonia on these field studies. To show us firsthand and give us cause to consider the conflict between the two factions. That is the purpose behind our field studies. Is it not, Your Highness? That is one of the reasons, yes. However, my foremost intention was to show you that during your lives, you will encounter many obstacles and conflicts. Not just between factions, but between the capital and the provinces, tradition and technology, even between nations. In these turbulent times, I thought that this would provide the hands-on education today's promising youths need. We need up-and-comers who can think and act independently to face tomorrow's challenges head-on. That makes sense. Wow, that's quite a plan. I can't help but feel a little unsure whether we can live up to such high expectations. Hearing your explanation has, at the very least, cleared up many of the doubts I've had up to this point. Class 7 does seem like an ideal environment to expand one's outlook on life. I feel like going through everything we have so far has brought us closer to doing exactly that. Yep. Marvelous. I'm so pleased to hear it. Just listening to you makes me feel even more certain that establishing Class 7 was the right decision. Especially since while the idea itself was mine, I have no real say in how the classes run day to day. Even so, I still hope to meet all of you at least once if only to tell you all this. That was when Alfin stepped in and offered to set up this little meeting. I see. <laughs> well, I could hardly refuse such a sincere request from my brother. But it also presented me a fine chance to finally meet Elise's beloved brother, as I've always wanted to. I your Highness! <laughs> Thank you for taking the time to tell us all of this, Your Highness. I feel like now that I know, I want to live up to the promise you saw in Class 7. Thing is, am I right in assuming that Class 7 doesn't exist just to fulfill your progressive ideal? What are you... Oh? 
The board has its chairman, of course, but three directors besides. My older brother Rufus, Imperial Governor Karl Regnitz, and Irina Reinford of the Reinford Group. Oh, yeah. Now that you mention it... They do seem to have certain expectations for us. <laughs> Precisely. As I mentioned, I no longer have anything to do with how Class 7 is run. That authority lies with the directors. As you're keenly aware, Rufus and Governor Regnant sit on opposite sides of the factional divide. And while Chairman Arena is mostly involved with Class 7's technology, like the Arcus, her intentions are a mystery to me. And it's those three who decide where you'll travel for your field studies. Is that right? When you put it that way, it does make it seem like some kind of bargaining is taking place behind the scenes. It was one of the conditions they gave in exchange for allowing Class 7 to be established. I'll admit, I hesitated to allow it, but I decided to place my hopes in you. We believed then, as we still do, that one day, you all will be a great light that can push back the darkness of this country. <laughs> well, I suppose when I put it that way, it sounds positively heroic. But that's just me. Don't feel too pressured by it. Your students, first and foremost, reach out and grab that fragrant rose of school life. Join a club. Eat cheap food with your friends at midnight. Fall in love. We live but once. Make your youth count. <laughs> you know, it's weird, but hearing you say that kind of takes a load off my mind. By the way, just earlier you said that we believed the Class 7 would be a great light. Is there someone else involved with Thors who shares your vision for our class, Your Highness? There is. Principal Van Dyke. I once attended Thors myself and studied under him. He gave my proposal to establish Class 7 his full backing. I see. He's been particularly considerate toward us ever since we arrived at the Academy. While he has no direct control over the running of the Academy, he does preside over the board meetings. And above all, he's the one who assembled an excellent team to give you first-rate training. An excellent team, you say? Are you referring to Instructor Sarah? <laughs> well, she's certainly one of them. Still, coaxing her away from her former line of work certainly played a large part in giving Class 7 a great foundation. She is, after all, one of the strongest people in the Empire. And her experience makes her a natural field leader. Wait, what? Instructor Sarah? One of the strongest people in Erebonia? Exactly what experience might you be referring to? <laughs> I've even heard rumors of her daring exploits myself. She was known as the Purple Lightning. Doesn't that sound exciting? Wait. Purple Lightning? I knew it. If you two have heard of it, it must be a household name among martial artists. That's right. Though I've just heard it in passing. Ah, that young ace of the Erebonian Bracer Guild, and one of the Empire's most famous bracers. She has a history full of brave feats and dangerous deeds. She was even the youngest bracer to achieve A-rank status. Back then, she was known as the Purple Lightning. Now, you know her simply as your homeroom teacher.
someday. The time is finally at hand. At last, the hammer of judgment shall rouse this indolent capital from its slumber. Yeah! Comrade G, all of the necessary preparations are complete. Feels like you have so few men accompanying you. Wouldn't it be wise to call in a few others for backup? <laughs> There's nothing to fear. As long as I have this flute, not even the railway military police stand a chance of stopping us. Tomorrow, the people of this land will at last know our name. My dear comrades, I shall be counting on you all.
Thank you.
On a roll! I can almost taste that grand prize. Crow? Ah, hey guys! How's that field study coming along? Oh, it's going fine. Why are you here? Oh, you don't know? Classes don't run back at the Academy during the Summer Festival. So I came here to squeeze as much fun as possible out of this fortuitous bit of free time. Meaning... The Summer Races, of course. Wait, you came all the way here to bet money on horse racing? We're minors! We're not allowed to place bets! <laughs> Do I look like a lawbreaker to you? There's a magazine that's running a prize contest for the summer races. You send in your predictions, and if you're spot on, you win a really fancy prize. So you came all the way to the capital just to check on that? If only we all had such boundless energy. Alright, time for some serious praying to the goddess. I'll leave the money here, okay? Thank you very much. Come back anytime. Anyway, I'm heading over to the cathedral over the Sonk district. Peace. Uh, thanks. Come on, goddess. Let me win that prize. That seems a rather pedestrian thing to pray for. So irresponsible. <laughs> That's cruel for you. Looks like there's still places here we haven't explored. Let's go look somewhere else.
sure are more people out than there were yesterday. They must have all come to see the Imperial Family's Parade.
chance. We can do this. Okay. My turn. My turn. Leave it to me. That takes care. Ours. Let's finish it. My turn. Here. It's my turn. Lock him working away. <laughs> A full height. Okay. Right. <laughs> oh, we did it.
turn. My turn. My turn. Leave it to me.
Toa, Angelica. Oh, I didn't expect to meet all of you here. Well, isn't this a coincidence? President Herschel? We certainly weren't expecting to encounter the two of you out here. Huh? Looks like the goddess herself brought us together. And now that she's granted us this chance, what do you two say we... I'm afraid we'll have to decline. We have our field study to attend to. What she said. Lame. Will she ever learn? <laughs> Looks like those rumors about her were true. Did you ride your orbital bike all the way here? Yeah, you can make it from Trista to here in 40 minutes on a good day. So I plopped Toa on the back of the seat and off we went. <sighs> It almost seems like a metallic horse. It's pretty cool. Angie's not the most careful driver, so it wasn't exactly what I'd call a leisure cruise. I really love the festival atmosphere, though. I just wish I could enjoy it without the threat of a terrorist attack hanging over us. Wait, how do you know about that? Did Instructor Sarah tell you? helping out a little with your field studies, too. Yesterday, I was the one who passed on the governor's request to Instructor Sarah, for example. I got pretty worried when I heard about terrorists, so Angie and I decided to see what was happening. I see. It appears you've done much for us without us even realizing it. Thanks. <laughs> it's nothing, really. I'm not doing any of the heavy lifting. Oh? I thought you were helping with all the paperwork and travel arrangements so everything runs smoothly. And that you're the liaison for our contacts in every region because Instructor Sarah keeps slacking off. S seriously I swear, just when I'd started thinking she was better than we were giving her credit for. Yeah, that's a little much, even for her. It, it's fine. Really. I'm sure she's got lots of stuff on her plate. Anyway, I heard you guys got to meet the princess. I'm so jealous. I wish I could have met her too. <laughs> we could hardly believe we met her ourselves. She really does look kind of angelic. Uh, if I'd only shown up earlier and tagged along with you. <laughs> Princess Alvin's beauty is definitely one of our national treasures. But your sister's quite the looker herself. I hope I get a chance to meet Elise again someday too. Actually, she's attending the garden party as Princess Alphen's attendant right now. Really? Oh, if only I could get Princess Alphen, Elise, and Fee together in the same place. We could call them the Fabulous Fifteens. Don't look now, but I think you're being co-opted into some sketchy-sounding group. Sounds good to me. Ugh. If I'd known this was gonna happen, I would have listened to my father and attended that party after all. But no, no, I couldn't have. I couldn't spoil my charms by wearing a dress. Oh! Oh! I could have worn a tuxedo instead! Why didn't I think of that earlier? Uh, Angie? Maybe you're putting a little too much thought into this. Hey, hey, the gang's all here. Crow? Oh, we didn't know you were here either. Fancy running into you. <laughs> yeah. You said you were going to the summer races, didn't you? How'd the main race go? Ah, hmm? uh, don't ask. Who could have guessed that Black Prince would come from behind in a burst of speed like that? And then Lumber Blitz barely squeezing past into second. There's no way anyone could ever see an upset like that coming. Oh, I guess I won with those four to five odds. Glad I decided to pony up some cash for that after all. Wait, you're the one who won the special prize? Oh, stop feeling up lady luck, would you? You're just sore because I've got better karma than you. 
Angie really does have scarily good luck with stuff like this. Sounds like the bell's chiming three o'clock. Guess that means all the ceremonies must be wrapping up. Perhaps we should make another round of our patrol areas, just to be safe. That seems like a sound idea. Yeah, we should get back to our patrols. It was good to see you, everyone. Okay, take care out there. Huh? Back to work already? I've got my Arcus with me, so just give me a ring if anything happens. Will do. What's wrong? It feels almost as though... Hmm. My guess would be there's been an increase in the water pressure. Yeah, this must be... <sighs> is this... Is it some kind of festival attraction? I don't think so. This must be the terrorists. Yeah, it seems that way. Angie, Crow, give me a hand. We need to evacuate everyone. The military police have their hands full. We need to handle this ourselves. Right. Gotcha. Okay, let's all... No, we've got this. You have something else you need to take care of. Something important. More important than this? What do you mean? <gasps> Modder Park. So this is just a diversion? I'd bet on it. Good day, Your Excellency. 
I do hope you'll forgive me for showing up to this party without an invitation. Ugh. You. Truth be told, I have no real qualms with you, personally. However, you are a willing collaborator with the man we loathe. So I'm afraid that makes you guilty by association. I figured that's what you were after. Let those girls go! They have nothing to do with this! Your Excellency! <laughs> I'm afraid we just can't do that. After all, they've yet to play their biggest part. That of your faction's most shameful thing. Oh, but fear not. I have no intention of taking their lives. Ah! Elise! Rain? Rain! What are you doing here? You made it. Dad, are you alright? The brats from Thor. So you've come to meddle in our affairs again, have you? Not this time, I'm afraid. I won't allow you to interfere. Is he... controlling those beasts? So that's how those monsters came to be running around out here. Rain! Be careful! Elise! Your Highness! You! <laughs> my, my, I can certainly tell when I'm not wanted. I suppose we'll just have to leave there. Go, my beasts! Strip them to the bow! We're not going to lose to a couple of these things! Two large monsters. Combat pattern analysis complete. All right, let's take them down. Okay. okay. Watch out, guys. Right. My turn. It's my turn! Lock it and work it away! <laughs> cool. Okay. How about this?
turn. Can't relax yet. Success. <clears throat> we must pursue them at once. There's no time to rest. Dad, you're bleeding. This little scratch? Nothing to worry about. But never mind me. Her Highness is in danger. Please, go after her. All right. Wait! Take me with you, too. Patrick? No. I need you to stay and protect everyone who's still here. Those monsters are still roaming around outside, and the governor is wounded. But... Please. If you're here, at least I can go knowing my father is in safe hands. <sighs> fine, fine, I'll stay. That's settled then. Let us give chase then. Your Excellency, please let the Railway Military Police know what's happening as soon as you can. You can count on it.
terrorists? Elise, Princess right, Alvin, right. please My be turn. safe. Monsters! No problem. We'll just cut our way through. Yeah. Stay on guard and don't get caught. It's my turn. Of course. My turn. Fool. Right. Analyzing enemy attack patterns. Analysis complete. But we can't relax yet. Now's our chance. Okay. Fall before my blade. Done.
Eat that! before my blade.
that's far enough! What? <sighs> Eat that! <laughs> Shit! What? Rain! You came for us! Show's over. Let her highness and Elise go. Now. Considering all that you've done, I can't say I'd be entirely comfortable letting you go free. But if you release them, we might be willing to consider it. Damn kids. <sighs> it's five against three. You've got no chance. And fleeing while trying to carry two hostages? I don't think that'll work out too well for you. So, would you please just let them go? <laughs> impressive. Very impressive. I had no idea Thors was educating such gifted students. Save it. Look, we can keep this stalemate going all day, or you can release them. It's up to you. But I'm warning you, if there's so much as a scratch on either of them, you'll wish the police found you before I did. Uh, you. Rain. Rain. Very well. We surrender. I'm not so proud that I can't see when we have no chance of victory. Then... So you'll let them go? Absolutely. If you can defeat him, please. Do it. Volatile anesthetic? <laughs> Fear not. I simply thought it best they sleep for a short while. After all, this is hardly a sight fit for the eyes of such innocent maidens. Damn it! Another monster?! What the...? The howl? This roar... Is that? It's a, a bone dragon. the demonic flute! An artifact capable of holding even the shadow that reigned over Heimdall during the Dark Ages in its throne. Now, I'll have you delay your journey to perdition no longer. Farewell, dear ladies and gentlemen of Class 7. There's no way we can take on that thing. What are we going to do? Uh, I can't estimate its strength. Or even the best way to fight it. <laughs> We're not just going to roll over and die here. If you think back on how much we've grown just during this field study, there's no way this thing is going to take us down. My blade is ready! Huh. Too impetuous to know when you're beaten, are you? Go, Dark Tyrant! Bring down the merciless hammer of judgment upon these hapless fools! This one's dangerous. Stay on your toes. 
right here. Leave it to me. Locked in, walking away. Go. I'll get you up. My turn. Analyzing enemy attack patterns. Analysis complete. My turn. Good luck. I've got this. Second floor. Gale. <laughs> Leave it to me.
turn. There! Let's go! An opening! <laughs> Sorry, can you handle this? I'll take care of this. I'll handle it. Done. But we can't relax yet. A plus outcome. All right. <laughs> I've only just begun. Great. It impossible. Laura, V. Roger. Damned! What? Yeah! No. The demonic flute. Let's check and mate. Oh, that was a tough one. What's our plan, Comrade G? <sighs> you vile Comrade G I am fully prepared to lay down my life for our cause It is not death I fear but this operation is too important to leave even a corpse behind. I'm afraid I must do what needs to be done. <laughs> I think it's about time we came out to play. Oh my, aren't you a quick little kitty? <laughs> Just my type. <laughs> That's the Sylphid I know. <sighs> Comrade S? Comrade V? Oh, you came for us. Oh, what a relief. Now we can... These must be... More terrorists! <laughs> I seem to recall specifically telling you to leave this operation to me. But I can't say I'm unhappy you decided to check in. Sorry, boss. But if you got yourself caught here, we would have been off to a pretty bad start. <laughs> I do apologize for cutting in, but we figured it was for the best. Comrade C decided to join us, too. And so I have. Uh. A mask! <laughs> Comrade C, I... wasn't expecting to see you here. Did my planning for this operation seem that flawed to you? On the contrary, it was almost perfect. But no plan is completely foolproof. 
one must always factor in unpredictable elements. As the ladies and gentlemen of Class 7 here have demonstrated so brilliantly. How does he know who we are? Who are you? We have already fulfilled our primary objective. Courting dishonor by harming a member of the Imperial family would gain us nothing now. Do you not agree? No, you're right. Release them. Elliot, Machias, I'm leaving the two of them to you. Okay. Got it. There. A gesture of goodwill, in the hopes that we may yet resolve this without bloodshed. What say you, ladies and gentlemen of Class 7? Will you stand aside and let us leave peacefully? Like hell we will. You abducted the Imperial Princess and an innocent girl. Drugged them. What Erebonian would stand idly by in the face of such an outrage? It's five against six. This won't be easy. Uh, guys... <laughs> you got guts, kids. I'll give you that. <laughs> well, I certainly wouldn't mind a little rough housing. No, it's only right that I be the one to test their metal. Wielders of the long sword, the great sword, the twin gun swords. Stand and face me. I shall be your opponent. <gasps> what? <laughs> Think of this as an entertaining way to kill some time. The railway military police are already on their way. Until then, pour out the vessel of your wrath upon me. <sighs> Interesting. He's awful sure of himself. Is he serious? There's no way he can win against all three of them. What is that? Another relic from the Dark Ages. A double saber. I am C. That is all you need to know. Now, come at me. If you think you're able. Uh, then allow us to begin. My turn. Arcus, activate. Right.
Okay. <laughs> right. My turn. Here we go. Okay. <laughs> That's our C for you. Who? Can't deny he's got the brains and the brawn to lead. What power? He might even be as strong as Sarah. Just... who are you people? <laughs> From today, you shall know us as the Imperial Liberation Front. In our hearts, the flames of silent anger. In our hands, the hammer of judgment that shall topple the dictator. That is our cause, our purpose. The Imperial Liberation Front? W what dictator? Freeze, all of you! Instructor! Captain Claire! Just in time. It appears the time has come to make our exit. Huh? Is that... Farewell. I'm sure we'll meet again. See you claw your way out of this grave. The passage is collapsing! Hurry! Right! Ah, we couldn't leave Juan up alone. Green, you carry her highness. Got it! That was pretty touch and go back there. But I'm glad to see you all pulled through. Well, thanks to you, Instructor. I had my doubts we were going to make it out of that alive. We could have come a bit sooner. Sorry, sorry. Anyway, there's no way we'll be able to follow them now. Indeed. So, the Imperial Liberation Front, is it? Your Highness! Elise! Oh, thank goodness. Whatever drug they were given doesn't seem to have had any lasting effects. I feel like I've caused you all a lot of trouble, but thank you for rescuing me. I'm just glad that you're safe and unharmed. <sighs> what happened? Are you alright, Your Highness? How are you feeling? You should worry more about your sister. Looks like the intelligence division was right on the mark. We have a number of the routes back to the surface locked down. Think we could smoke them out? Personally, I doubt it. This tunnel system is incredibly expansive, with too many areas we know nothing about. Continue the search for a while longer, then focus on restoring order in the city. Yes, ma'am. 
I'll send a report to the other divisions and let them know the situation's been resolved. So, Imperial Liberation Front, what's your game? In the end, the Railway Military Police brought the chaos under control, and the first day of the festival came to a close. Despite his injuries, Governor Regnitz kept on top of things, ensuring that the rest of the festival passed by peacefully. The next morning, it was time for us to leave the capital behind and make our way back to Trista. I really don't know how to begin thanking you. You've done so much for our family that I doubt we'll ever be able to repay you. Not at all, Your Highness. There's nothing to repay us for. We just did what we had to. Oh, come now. There's no need to be so modest. It scares me to think what might have happened if Elise and I had been taken away by those people. So I can't thank you all enough. Please allow me to extend my thanks for your help as well. I'm truly grateful. Elise. Oh, I'm just glad you're safe. Group B's efforts were a great help to Cedric and I as well. Thank you again for your assistance in restoring order to the city. I'm honored, Your Highness. <laughs> I'm so glad to have been of service. <laughs> Just think of it as returning the favor for your help pushing to make Class 7 a reality. Still, now we've got the Imperial Liberation Front to worry about. Regrettably. There have been signs they were up to no good behind the scenes before now. That incident in Nord, for example. But now they finally stepped out of the shadows and announced themselves to the world. They appear to be insurgents in the truest sense of the word, led by several key figures, C being the most prominent. The Intelligence Division is doing its utmost to gather information about these leaders even as we speak. struck me as rather... mysterious in some ways. Even though they abducted us, they rarely showed the kind of maliciousness one would expect from terrorists. It seemed more like they were in the grip of some kind of intense passion. True. Not that it excuses abducting your highness like they did. An intense passion, you say? It did seem that way. In our hearts, the flames of silent anger. In our hands, the hammer of judgment that shall topple the dict. That's what their leaders said when they made their appearance. Indeed. <laughs> All the ham-handed theatrics of a middle school play. Yeah. You can tell how gleeful he must have been to say the flames of silent anger in front of an audience. Well, it's no mystery what they're referring to, at least. Oh, thank goodness. I didn't miss you. Wait, isn't that... Is he? Dad's with him, too. You made it, Cedric! Huh. Just in time, too. Your Highness? 
did you come all this way just to bid us farewell? Of course. After all you've done for us, I thought it was the least I could do. Ah, is this the rest of Class 7? It's a pleasure to meet you. My name is Cedric Ricey Arner. I wanted to thank you for coming to my sister's aid in her time of need. Allow me to extend to you my most heartfelt appreciation. You're too generous, your highness. Th the honor was ours. Thank you, your highness. This is the crown prince. He's pretty cute. Fee? <laughs> I certainly wouldn't mind if he took a few lessons in manliness from the gentlemen of Class 7, though. Uh, Alfin, come on. I think that's a little harsh, Your Highness. <laughs> well, you're still just 15. You have plenty of growing ahead of you. Still, it isn't often I see you keeping the Imperial Governor company. <laughs> I suppose that's true. I just happened to be here on business, so I thought I'd take the chance to say goodbye to everyone. How are you feeling? Are your injuries all right now? Yes, nothing too serious, fortunately. I'm still feeling it, but it shouldn't be too much longer before I'm back to my old self. That's good to hear. I'm glad to see you looking all hale and hearty, Your Excellency. Thank you. While no one could have foreseen how it ended, you did manage to complete this month's field study. On behalf of the Board of Directors, I'd like to congratulate you for your exemplary work. We're honored you'd say so. Thank you, Your Excellency. We three directors may have very different positions on many issues, including how Class 7 should be run. But for my part, I'd like you to enjoy student life however you choose. I think the other directors would agree with me on at least that much. Dad. I'm glad to hear you feel that way, Your Excellency. In that regard, you have nothing to worry about, Your Highness. <laughs> well, if you say so. I've always found you a trustworthy man, of course. But... Ah, I see that everyone's here. Oh, it, it couldn't be. <gasps> Chancellor Osborne! As a matter of fact, the Chancellor and I just came from an audience with His Majesty the Emperor. I'm overjoyed to see you safe and well, Princess Alpha. Clearly, the Goddess has bestowed her blessings on us. Thank you, Chancellor. I'd also like to reassure Prince Oliver that we're starting a nationwide hunt for members of the Imperial Liberation Front. An investigation into the backgrounds of its members is also underway, so you needn't worry. My, my. Nothing gets past you, does it? Well, I suppose that means you have the security detail for next month's trade conference well in hand? Of course. I'll see to it that everything is taken care of. Ah, but where are my manners? Please excuse me for not introducing myself. I'm Giliath Osborne, representative of the Erebonian government. Though I imagine those of you who read the papers may know me better as the Blood and Iron Chancellor. <gasps> uh, it's an honor to meet you, Your Excellency. 
Um, your reputation precedes you, Your Excellency. <laughs> I've heard much about the recent exploits of Thor's Class 7. Traveling across the Empire for first-hand learning with your field studies, it's quite the fascinating program. I hope you'll keep up the good work. We shall endeavor to. Thanks. I hope we'll live up to your expectations. Ah, yes. It's been quite some time, young person. I'm glad to see your new career path is working out for you. Thank you, Chancellor. I wouldn't be where I am today if not for you. I really owe you for all you've done for me. <laughs> General Van Dyke was my superior back when I was in the army. As such, I'm planning on granting you a bit of additional assistance. I should have it ready for you in a few weeks' time. What are you...? <sighs> I have great expectations for you all. Nurture the bonds you share, and train up bodies and wills of steel. For I have no doubt you'll need them in the turbulent times to come. up in the world <laughs> I've got a little reward here for you drinks are on me someday perfect you guys are the best 